Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Mentally Detoured. What is that, you ask? A mental detour? That's when your mind takes an unexpected diversion into mental illness. My name is Ellen, and I'm not a medical or mental health professional of any kind. I am someone who's grown up surrounded by mental illness, which was mostly undiagnosed and untreated because of stigma and shame. Many faced with mental illness experience stigma, shame, confusion, and frustration, and this can make a mental illness isolating and even more frightening. We've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go to help quiet that stigma. These videos and my blog are for those who may be experiencing mental illness in a child or loved one for the first time. I plan to share basic information and resources from experts that will, I hope, help educate anyone, even the experienced, to become more knowledgeable about the subject. I believe that education helps reduce or eliminate stigma, and there is information that is useful for everyone to know. Health, mental or physical, is part of the human experience. Since I'm not a mental health professional, you might want to know a little bit more about me and my connections with mental illness. There has been both undiagnosed and diagnosed mental illness and addiction in the family I grew up in, which in therapy world is known as your family of origin. I myself have been diagnosed with a mental illness and we'll talk about that in a future video. I also have extended family members that have been affected as well as my husband, son, and daughter. When I say that they have been affected, that doesn't necessarily mean they themselves have a mental illness, but they have been touched by someone who has. I seem to know a lot of people who have been touched by mental illness. So this is pretty general information about myself, and I'll expand on a lot of this in future videos. Why am I doing this? I am doing this for parents, family members, friends that arrive in ERs and family support groups like the one that I attend and others just like them around the world. Many, many times newcomers come to these groups or they stand in ERs and they have a dazed, pained look on their faces and they say, I didn't know this could happen to my child. I don't really even understand it. I don't know what it is. They never had a problem in high school. They're brilliant. They got into the best schools. Just what is psychosis? What is a psychotic break? I've I've heard of that, maybe, but I don't really even know what it is. And the people that I've told, they don't understand. They just think they should just snap out of it, get out of bed and go back to school. And then there's so many others I just can't tell. That's why I'm doing it, to help those people eliminate the shame and the stigma and help them be able to talk about these problems and these mental illnesses that their children have. How about a little more information? Mental health problems are actually very common. In 2011, for example, data from mentalhealth.gov shows us that one in five U.S. adults experienced a, a mental health issue. So in our 100,000 seat mental illness stadium, these one in five that are experiencing a mental health issue would fill up these two sections right here. One in 10 young people experienced a period of major depression. The young people over here are filling up this whole section. And finally, one in 20 Americans experienced and lived with a serious mental illness such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or major depression. Those 5,000 people in this group would be half of this section. That's a lot of people, don't you think? I bet you know somebody in one of those sections. Okay, let's talk about some suicide facts. Here's your 100,000 seat mental illness stadium. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. So in 2011, you invited 100,000 of your closest friends for your annual party. But that year, 38,000 of them couldn't come because they died by suicide. 
that would be everyone in these sections. You wouldn't even need the sections. Here's your 30,000. Let's say that's about 8,000 more. Two years later, in 2013, over 41,000 died by suicide. That's one person every 12.8 minutes. So in one hour in 2014, every hour, four people committed suicide. And in, from your invitation list to your annual party, you wouldn't need chairs for this many more people. The suicide rate is rising and we need to educate people and stop this epidemic. Are you still thinking, those facts are interesting, but mental health problems really don't affect me? The truth is, we all have brains. I guess unless zombies have eaten your brains, and then you're a zombie and you have bigger problems. Mental illnesses are illnesses of the brain. I want mental health to be treated like physical health. You can have the flu, a cold, a broken arm, and there are treatments for those, and little or no judgment. Mental health and illness aren't all that different. Well, except for the judgment part. We all fall somewhere on the spectrum of mental health or illness, and mental illness is not discriminating. Anyone can get, have it. Yet, 38% of adults with diagnosable mental health problems and less than 20% of children and adolescents receive needed treatment. The thing about mental illness is that it has been around since the dawn of man. The ancient Egyptians had an awareness of it, and around 1550 BC, they wrote one of the oldest preserved medical documents. The scroll contains some 700 magical formulas and remedies, many of them incantations meant to turn away disease-causing demons. Mental disorders are detailed in a chapter called the Book of Hearts and included disorders such as depression, dementia, concentration and attention, and emotional distress in the heart or mind. Treatments typically included applying bodily fluids, not sure I want to know which fluids and where they were applied, while reciting magical spells. Hallucinogens may have been used as part of the healing rituals, and religious temples may have been used as therapeutic retreats. The descriptions of these disorders suggest that ancient Egyptians did not differentiate much between mental and physical diseases and some of their treatments do not seem that much different than modern day treatments. I challenge modern day culture to embrace the concept that mental health plus physical health equals human health. We are not one without the other. Let's be informed and not walk blindly down the path of life, whether it's a detour or the one you had planned all along.